and they feel like, you know, they have so much to pick and choose from, they're not willing to negotiate, they're not willing to stay committed in their relationship. Are you single, married, dating? I am married. Okay. All right. Right. But, so you're, but you're observing this about your single sisters? Is that what you're... No, I, I'm a, well, my single sister, my husband, I, I'm experiencing that now. I just, I, I feel like I, I put so much in and I... um. I took the time to pick a person who I felt like would be a strong man. Mm -hmm. And because he has so many options, he doesn't feel like he has no moral clock. He doesn't have his own moral clock. And I think uh, many of them do not have their own moral clock. Mm -hmm. Well, the caller has, has really, I think, put her finger on, uh, again, uh, the, the major issue, um, which is, you know, not that individual black men are morally deficient. I, I don't think that's true. It's not that black men are any more, uh, you know, morally deficient than any other group of men. Uh, but, it, but it is the case that, you know, we have a context where there are just many more black women because, you know, one in ten black men is in jail, literally, in the early 20s and, and, and in their 20s and early 30s across the nation. Uh, one in four will go to jail. At the other end, twice as many black women as men graduate from college. Mm -hmm. So when you have these skewed numbers, it, it just it, 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 it sort of undermines stable relationships. Right. Uh, and and that would be true for any group, but it undermines stable relationships. And you know, again, the, you know, one possibility, right, for black women to try to counteract that situation, um, while we as a nation work on the bigger question of how to have more black men faring well. Uh, one option for black women is to expand their own options. That's the quote that yeah. I started off with at the top of yeah. the hour. Yeah, and that, that yeah. more black women marry non-black men, uh, and uh, more black men and women might marry each other. Right, and so the, so the, and the, and the idea there is that if, if 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 black men had fewer options, basically, uh, then relationships would become more stable. Yeah, um, when when I was in the and, London, England so, a few years ago, that was uh, the case over there is that uh, there's, a, there's a shortage of women. Uh, there are more, more, more women than men, and so the men are feeling like, uh, you know, they feel more desperate to try to mate up because, right. because of the shortage. Right. So uh, right. I think that's the principle you're saying. If uh, there weren't such a, a surplus of women, right. men perhaps would um, not be so, what, relaxed about... Uh, uh, marrying or, or 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 mating up? Well, it's not. It's not. It's not. Right. Right. Well, and, and, and it's also the case I should to you know validate the caller's point again is that you know that there is research even that looks at uh, you know in that looks at men who have more than one partner, right. right? And that's sometimes both within marriage and with and outside of marriage, or you know men who are married and men who are not married. Uh, and, and it is the case, and, and this is. But you a, have some stuff in a, your book that says that, that that there's much more infidelity right, in is, in black marriages. This is what I'm saying. This is as a as a as a black man. This is right. a difficult issue to, to right. broach. But, right. but but it actually is the case that black men, single and married, are more likely than other groups of men to have more than one partner. Right. Um. And because they can. And that's just and that well that's just the market out there. Right. That's, um, that's what I mean. By that. Right. Right, that's, that's, that's the market, and, you know, that's not, it's, it's actually, I think, less a commentary about individual men right. than it is a commentary about a situation right. where you have lots of right. women right. who are uh, who are unattached, right. and right. for some of them, you know, it's less important that the man is married. That's right. Even. That's so, right. Um, so that's part of it, too. Right, right. Yeah, it obviously can't happen if the single woman is not willing to be a participant. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. Uh, some of this is for her to look at as well. Right, but but for the single woman, though, she's in a position where she doesn't have a whole lot of options. Right. And so, you know, she tries to make the best of a bad situation. Yep. All right, we're not excusing it, we're explaining it. Exactly. All right, we'll go to the next caller. Welcome to the Audrey Chapman Show. You're on the air. Thank you uh, for taking my call. Um, first of all, the Bible never said that we need a certificate from an institution to get married. That's one. To, today, the, the marriage license is nothing but another tax. Two is most black women, particularly black women, they are constantly looking for materialism and image instead of the guy.
God that they need. That's the main reason why black women are not married because they're so worried about materialism and their image. What have you done for me what? lately? Is, and, that, is and, that what you're and, talking and, about? No, well, it's a little more than that. They, 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 they're looking for what can I get out of you. That's what they're looking for. Yeah, instead of, mm -hmm. okay, well, instead, well, what all of us need to do, both men and women, is to find partners in a, in, in this, in, in, in this, uh, in, in the union for real. It's basically all I'm trying to say is we need to be more partner minded instead of me, 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 I need this, I need, I need, I need. That's the problem. Right, right. And so part of what happens, and this caller has a, caller has, has, has a, I think an accurate observation of some situations. And here's where it gets it right, I think, is that, uh, again, if you have a situation where, uh, lots of men, are actually not looking for a you know, long-term, exclusive, monogamous relationship, right? right. Um, then women, some women at least, might realize that, you know, if this is not going to be a long-term play here, right. maybe I need to get some short-term benefits out of this relationship. Yeah. Uh, and so, again, yeah, that's making the best of a bad situation, that yeah. I'm not going to have this relationship that I really want. Right. So, so I'm going to get, get what I can get. Maybe I should get something now. Right. <laughs> right. right. And, and, right. Is that part of the dynamic? It probably is. You know, we don't have good data on that, but right. from all the interviews that I conducted with women across the country, including in D.C., right. um, that's something that, you know, some women, frankly, will admit to. Absolutely. That, that they're making their own calculation right. about what is in this relationship for them, and if it seems that marriage is not in it, right. then there needs to be something else that they're getting out of I it. I need to be getting something from it. Well, I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Your book, of course, is going to do really well because it it's very controversial. <laughs> and uh, the book, again, is, is Marriage for White People, How the African-American Marriage Decline Affects Everybody. The author is Ralph Richard Banks, and you do want to go out and get uh, this book. It's packed with all kinds of uh, information, and I think the novel idea that you put out there, uh, it, which is that uh, if uh, more women would uh, be willing to date and, and uh, marry outside of their race, it would, it would give them that, the leverage that they need. Uh, to negotiate, and uh, it would uh, even it even the playing field, as they say. Exactly. All right. Well, we thank you so much for uh, for doing this and for taking the time out. Uh, up next, I've got a lady that decided to uh, uh, marry outside of uh, her race, and she will talk a lot about uh, that uh, experience. So, would you do that? Could you do that? Give me a call. Two zero two. 432-9487 or 1-800-221-9487. This is the Audrey Chapman Show on 96.3 WHUR. I'll be right back. It's more than a bunch of strength. I have a new author with me now. Her name is Karen Langhorn Folin, and she is the author of Don't Bring Home a White Boy. We're still here at 202-432-9487 or 1-800-221-9487. Welcome to the show, Karen. Yes. Uh, you've written a very interesting book, uh, and we have... Uh, We've explored your book before, but we thought that it would be great to have you back on, given our topic. Uh, and I want to start out uh, for folks who uh, perhaps uh, aren't familiar with the book and uh, see if you can um, help us out to sort of understand how you, how you, why you wrote the book and uh, sure. just your journey, you know, because I don't think you started out uh, uh, in life this way. As a matter of fact... Um, you divorced uh, for you were divorced for about four years, and you were uh, in a place where you were uh, trying to to go out and, and date uh, African American men. Is that not true? That's right. I I, I am the woman that uh, Professor Rick's book is sort of geared toward. I I am the woman who's lived this life. That's 
I, I, um, you know, I, I have a college degree. I men who had a similar background to me. Right. And when I was about 30, I met a nice older man, and we married and uh, had a child together, but the relationship just never really worked out. So the first man was African-American? African-American man, okay. but he was 19 years older than I was. Ah. Okay. Yeah. So we had a generation gap, but, you know, I found that a lot of the women, my, a lot of the men around my age were either very uncomfortable with my educational background or they just weren't interested in marriage. Right. They were not interested in settling down. And I'm 30. I want to have family. Right. I want all of the trappings of what my parents had right. because my parents were a married African-American couple. They were right. married until my father passed away. So right. 46 years, you right. know. Right. So that I wanted your, that. That was your model. That was my model, and right. I wanted that. Right. So I'm dating. I'm looking. I, I find men who want to live with me. I find men who want to sleep with me, but I don't find men who want to settle down. Who want to commit to you. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So I married my, my ex-husband who, you know, I, you know we, we, women, we're, we're trusting, we're loyal, and we believe, unfortunately, some things that we really shouldn't. One right. of the things that I fell into at the age of 30 when I married my first husband was I believed that I could change him, right. and I was his third wife. Now, in hindsight, that should have been a clue. Right. But I thought that I could make it different, and unfortunately, you know. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. So He's a good long, person, but right. it just didn't work. So how long were you separated and then divorced uh, and in the dating pool again before uh, it came to you that you were going to have to do something different? We were we were separated and divorced for about five years. Okay, so five years. Yeah, yeah. We we were married. Like I said, I was thirty. Right. Uh, we were divorced by the time I was thirty five. Okay. <laughs> and, All right. And, and, and then at thirty five, you begin your life again. Well, yeah. For a good five years, I kind of hung out and did nothing. Oh, I, okay. I raised my daughter. I I focused. No, mainly on her. Right. And when she got to be about eight, and I'm getting close to forty, I realized. You know, I cannot live my life with just a child for a companion. And furthermore, she's growing up. And my youth is going out the window. I need, if I want to be in a relationship again, maybe now would be the time for me to start seriously looking and really re-examining what it is that I want, who it is that I want, what I've done wrong in my past relationships, what I need to fix about myself. You know, all of the questions I think are critical to ask ourselves before we start in a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I actually made myself a list okay. on the advice of a friend of mine who is a, a, a minister and a teacher, and she said very wisely to make a list of the qualities that I wanted my new mate to have, okay. and that I could not put anything on the list that I could not say was true about me as well wow. already. Okay, that's very good. Because, you know, I think a lot of times women will say, oh, you know, I want him to have this and that and that and this. I want right. him to be rich. I want him to be, you know, handsome. And when you look in the mirror or when you look at your own plate, you're not any of those things. Right. Or, and it's kind of silly to expect, I mean, we're mirrors in our relationship. It's kind of silly to expect to attract something that you're not already. Right. Now, she did not, not encourage, and neither do I, to put anything about the physical on there. So it wasn't about race. It couldn't be. She said qualities. Right. And so I was very literal and, and, and took her suggestions very seriously, and I focused on qualities. I wrote my list, and on the list were things like, you know, I want him to be a family man. I want him to cherish me. Right. I want him to, you know, love my daughter. Right. I want him to be interested and passionate about life and well-traveled and you know, educated and things that, you know, are qualities that you would look for in a person. But nowhere on that list was you know, five, ten, or taller, um, skin color, eye color, nothing. Right. So it was all about his character. Right. And she, I said, you know, well, now what, now what do I do? And she said, put it in a drawer and let God do his work. Right. Well, that's hard for a modern woman, and, <laughs> I, and it's, like it's hard for a lot of people it to seems, truly let go. It 